Yo, what is going on guys, Vixio back, and today we've got a brand new video and a big video at that. I just want to make an official Bitcoin prediction, price prediction to just get this out there and see, you know, what it looks like in at the end of the year, see if we were close, if we undershot, overshot, and, and just what happened with the price in general. So I'm sure there's a lot of people on the internet everywhere saying their price predictions, what other people are saying. People are saying a million dollars a coin, $500,000 a coin, all these different types of stuff. There is always been insane predictions for Bitcoin. Um, but I think this year is more of a year where those have a big possibility of actually coming true. So I don't think the million dollars or 500,000 even is something that's really in play this year. But I'd say Bitcoin is at minimum a six figure coin at the end of the year. My own price prediction is $115,000 a coin. Um, which is going to bring the market cap of Bitcoin up to around 2.17 trillion dollars and That sounds like a big number and it sounds like it's insane But Bitcoin's market cap is already around 700 billion like 670 billion 700 billion It's fluctuating that area right now So it's almost already a trillion and the whole cryptocurrency market as a whole has reached a trillion uh, and it's just I don't think it's that insane to think about getting Bitcoin to over $2 trillion of an asset. There's a lot of money coming into this space. Institutions are coming in left and right. You have people like um, MicroStrategies that everybody knows has like over a billion dollars in Bitcoin in, in, in their treasury reserves in Bitcoin. And it's just crazy to think they have that. Michael Saylor has something like a billion dollars as well. Uh, mass neutrals come in and put a hundred million dollars. You have all these companies coming in and there's only so much Bitcoin. There's only 21 million Bitcoin that will ever exist. And there's 900 Bitcoin a day coming into circulation being mined right now. So even with just those institutional buyers, they're buying more Bitcoin than what's being produced. So obviously supply and demand, that means the price is going to go up. Um, when you look at people like Grayscale, I think la I think just in this month, this first half of January, they bought all like 2,900 Bitcoin in just this month. So they're buying, on average, every month, they're buying three times of what's being produced. PayPal's buying 100% of what's being produced. Square is buying 90% of what's being produced. So the Bitcoin supply is being very constricted. All these companies want it. And if you want it, you're going to have to pay for it. The later you get into this, the higher you're going to have to pay, the, the higher price you're going to have to pay for the Bitcoin that you want. So I think a big catalyst would be people like MicroStrategies and Mass Mutual um, coming in and buying the Bitcoin as a reserve. It's not a huge amount of their reserve. It's like 1%, 3% or something. But they're getting involved. And that opens the door for other companies to get involved too. Push the price up. Institutional buying is better than retail buying which is what we saw in 2017 was retail buyers, meaning the average person, me and you, buying Bitcoin, running the price up and then selling it because we just want quick profits. But when you take institutions into case, when they see the run up, they don't wanna sell and take profits. They wanna look for an asset that they're gonna hold for 10 years, 50 years, 100 years. A company like Mass, Mass Mutual is a 100 year old company. They're looking for an asset that they can hold and store their value for the next 50 to 100 years. They want their company to go on. So that's the difference between this run up and this bull market and the 2017 bull market. Now another person who's very knowledgeable in Bitcoin has been involved basically since the beginning is Max Kaiser. And he has a clip of him saying his price prediction. Obviously um, his is $220,000 per coin. I'm gonna show that interview in a second, that little clip, but it is, um, Crazy to think his is that high because he got this uh, this Bitcoin price range in 2020. Completely right. He got he said it was going to be $28,000 a coin and it was literally almost right on the dot. He got it right. So it was crazy. So he carries a lot of weight with his prediction and stuff. So I'm going to show that clip right now. And he makes a lot of good points uh, throughout this on, as to why. But he's a, a very knowledgeable person at Bitcoin. Made the most accurate forecast for how Bitcoin would close off 2020 amongst all the popular Bitcoin pundits and advocates in the world. Max Kaiser had forecasted $20,000 Bitcoin by the end of 2020. So how is he expecting Bitcoin to close off in 2021? The corrections in Bitcoin have been 
successfully getting less and less and less. I mean, I've went through three 80 to 90% corrections, you know, in, in Bitcoin since 2011. So, uh, but since then we've had less and less and less. So, um, we just experienced a 20% correction. And so now that correction's over and now we start going higher. And so it'll start to behave more like an asset class where you might see 10 to 20% corrections. The 30, 40, 50% corrections, I think we're past that, past that because it's, because the size of the market's gotten to be a lot bigger and the amount of money on the sidelines waiting to get in is enormous. The biggest money funds in the world, BlackRock, Stan Druckenmiller, Paul Tudor Jones, Mass Mutual Insurance Company, they're all sitting on the bid, hoping to accumulate as much Bitcoin as possible. And that's only gonna get bigger and bigger. Sovereign wealth funds are gonna get into this, et cetera. So the, the corrections will be less and less and less. I'm going with $220,000 for Bitcoin as a 2021 target and that would bring us up to over four trillion dollar market valuation which i think is where is a good 2021 uh, objective you know we, we were going to catch up to gold that would bring us up to not quite half gold's valuation but getting close to gold's valuation i think the catalyst is going to be as i said a major central bank failing plus the money printing is uh, is going to go absolutely weimar republic so we're going to see that, depending on how you uh, calculate this, the 10 to 15 trillion that was printed in the last. So 220,000 per Bitcoin. When you come up with these forecasts, like I said two years ago, you accurately predicted the 2020 forecast. How do you come up with these numbers? Are you sitting at the table with a calculator? Are you, you know, baking your cheesecake and it comes to you? Like, how do you get to that number? Yeah, I like the image of me baking a keto cheesecake and, and thinking about all these things. Um, it, well, first of all, some of it's proprietary. You know, I can't go into the minutia because, you know, this is the secret sauce of my whole enterprise. I don't want okay. to be specific. But having said that, you know, there's certain um, trends uh, that you can in, put into your calculations. So we, we just had a halving, right? We had the third halving in Bitcoin. You know, there's two things, in, there's three things in Bitcoin that people like Noriel Rabini never mentioned. The halvings, the difficulty adjustment, and the hash rate. Now, that would be like me being a real estate uh, broker and trying to sell real estate and telling people that I don't know where the house is, I don't know how big the house is, and I don't know who owns the house. Would you be a successful real estate broker? No. Okay, so Rubini is your target today. We get it, um, but that- Okay, that let, me, let me get back to the question. So the, the yeah. halving happens every four years. So the supply gets cut in half, so that then you, you input that into the demand. So the demand is going, you know, the, the demand's going higher, right? All these huge money folks are coming in to Bitcoin. Then the, the supply is shrinking. Uh, for example, uh, there's 900 Bitcoin a day that are created and the, and the demand is over 4,000 a day. So that should tell you something right there. If you look at the exchanges that were there's Bitcoin, uh, kind of a snapshot of how many Bitcoin are circulating or in existence being moved around, that is shrinking rapidly because mm -hmm. institutions are taking Bitcoin. They're, they're gobbling up that Bitcoin. We're gonna enter a, a Bitcoin shortage. So a couple of things we're, we haven't seen, we're gonna see in 2021, we're going to see gap pricing uh, in terms of price discovery. So, okay, it's 36, 37,000. You know, once you get up above 40,000, that panic buying from institutions comes in. You could see 42,000 and then the next print be 44,000, right? You're going to see. Is it, is it a straight up road to 220,000 or is there going to be major corrections along the way? Well, like we just saw a 20% correction. I think we're going to see 10, 20 percent corrections uh, all the time and i i don't know i wouldn't say that this is where we end the year either probably this okay. 220,000 number probably you're going to see that in october november is will be the high of the year if you look historically to how the bitcoins traded uh versus the halvings and the, and the demand and the difficulty adjustment and the mining industry and the, the um, acceleration of the technology in the mining industry and how efficient miners are, the cost of electricity, right? That's also a factor in this calculation. Now, getting involved in Bitcoin during this big bull market, a huge run up, it can be scary and 
and kind of frightening to get involved in thinking you're just gonna lose your money. You look back to what happened in 2017, if you weren't involved back then or you weren't even thinking about Bitcoin, a lot of people weren't, then you wouldn't even know the differences that are coming up with, you know, how these are different. Like I said, the institutional run up compared to a real, uh, compared to the like average Joe and just normal person buying it and running it up, looking to make quick profit. So if you do want to get involved in Bitcoin and don't have any right now, so you don't have profit, like everyone's saying 100% of people in Bitcoin are in profit. Um, obviously, if you don't have any, you're not in profit. So uh, the best thing I would do is say you want to take a thousand dollars of it and put it into bitcoin the best thing to protect yourself if you're nervous about drops or not is to put like 250 dollars a week in for a month so at four at the end of the fourth week you'll have put a thousand dollars in you'll dollar cost average into the market and you protect yourself against drops or massive drops that might happen and fluctuate your portfolio. If you're not so worried about drops and you're more looking directly into the long term, looking for Bitcoin in five years, 10 years, then you should be able to just put whatever money you pick. I'm using a thousand as like a just a base number to do stuff off of. But whatever number you pick, whatever dollar amount you pick, and you want to just put it in there for the next five years, then it doesn't matter if you buy now or buy uh, once a week for the next four months or something. You just can put it all in at once, whatever you plan to put in and don't have to watch, don't worry about. As long as you don't have to look at that and if it's down 30%, get worried, then you can put it in the market. That's the biggest thing for people you gotta do with investing in general and especially in Bitcoin. It's so volatile. If you have more money in there than you are willing to watch drop in value, if you get nervous when drops happen and think that you're losing your money, then you have too much money in Bitcoin. It's simple as that. So you want to make sure you, you balance it and have money in there where you can not have to worry about it. You can check on it like once a month and see where it's at, but not have to constantly check it and worry about it. If you're going to do that, then it's just too much money then. And then also don't think of Bitcoin as a get rich quick scheme. For any investment that you do, do not view it as a get rich quick scheme. That's the quickest way that people lose money is trying to get rich quick. A great Warren Buffett quote look to is him saying everyone can get rich slow. People just don't want to do that obviously meaning that people want to get rich quick. They don't want to be a millionaire in 10 years. They want to be a millionaire tomorrow. And if you think about being a millionaire tomorrow, you're just not going to get there. It's it's so hard to do that and so unrealistic that it's just not going to happen. Now, some people might get lucky, but the majority of people, you're not going to be able to find the trade that brings you from a hundred thousand dollars to a million dollars in a week it's just it's just not happening so guys that's my bitcoin price prediction One hundred fifteen thousand dollars a coin by the end of 2021 you saw max kaiser all of his points are great his 20 220 thousand i wouldn't be surprised if it hit that i think my prediction is is conservative and we're keeping it kind of on the lower end to see you know what happens there i think that it's conservative i think it can go higher but i'm comfortable thinking that Bitcoin could get to $115,000 a coin by the end of the year. So let me know what you think of Bitcoin, if you own any, or if you're thinking about getting in any, and if any of this information helped you at all, smash that like button and subscribe button. Uh, we are on the road to 1,000 subscribers. I'll see you guys in my next video.